Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I wanted to talk about using Luminar AI in conjunction with Lightroom. The folks at Skylum have said that Luminar AI was designed for editing images and it's not a digital asset manager. That doesn't mean you can't use Luminar AI to access your images, but that's not its strength. Lightroom, on the other hand, is the one of the best digital asset managers on the planet today, and I know many of you use Lightroom for that purpose, and so do I. By the way, Luminar AI is not an update to Luminar 4. It's a brand new product built from the ground up. You know, it doesn't use layers. It's totally different. Today, I want to show you how you can use Lightroom and Luminar AI together, and there are three ways of doing that. Now, I'm going to show you those three ways today. But I really want to showcase how you can send your raw files into Luminar AI to take maximum control of your editing capabilities. And by the way, the release date for Luminar AI is December 15th. And many of you who were in that uh, first 30,000 pre-order group, you've already received your copy of Luminar AI, or at least you should have by now. Also, if you enjoy my uh, YouTube tutorials, please like, share, and subscribe. Now, this really helps me to grow my channel, and I really appreciate it. And thank you for your help. Please leave comments and questions in the comments section below. I'd really love to hear from you. And also, you can still pre-order Luminar AI by clicking my affiliate link in the description below. I make a small commission uh, when you do that, and this also helps me to grow my channel. By the way, you will have a 30-day money-back guarantee from the product's release date. So basically, you have 30 days to really evaluate Luminar AI and see if it's really right for you. And now, without any further ado, let's get started. We're starting out here in Lightroom, and as I said in the intro, we're using Lightroom today as a digital asset manager. So here's all my images on the bottom here. You see all my thumbnails, and I just picked out this image just for a random image to work with today. It's a rural farm in uh, Pennsylvania here. I like the clouds in the sky. I think it adds some interest to this image, but by no uh, stretch of the imagination is this a great image. But I wanted to show you the three different ways today of uh, sending your images into Luminar AI. I've already made some basic adjustments on this, uh, and I added a little bit of sharpening, some noise reduction on it, and I always do lens corrections, remove chromatic aberrations, enable profile corrections, and that's it. Just some basic adjustments. Now, let me show you the first way that we can edit this in Luminar AI. Say we are, we're happy with this starting out uh, adjustments here, and now we want to do further adjustments in Luminar AI. So I would just right-click the canvas, edit in, and I could just find uh, Luminar AI here, right here. Click it, and it would send it right into Luminar AI, and I could take up with the processing from there. The second way is to come down to the bottom of this list and say open as a smart object in Photoshop. So it'll send it into Photoshop as a smart object, a smart filter, and then we could send it into Luminar from there and do our edits and have a non-destructive workflow, which is really cool. So that's the second method. And now on to my favorite method, the third method. Now pay close attention here. What you need to do is come up here to File and come down to Plugin Extras. And inside of Plugin Extras, you're gonna look for transfer to, you'll notice I have Luminar, Luminar 3, Luminar 4, Luminar 2018, I've been with Luminar for a long time, as you can see, or transfer to Luminar AI. Click that, and it'll launch Luminar AI. Now, what's gonna happen when Luminar AI opens up, the images are gonna look different because it's not gonna have any of its uh, Lightroom edits on it. It's just going to be that raw image with no editing whatsoever. Luminar AI uses artificial intelligence to really map out your image, to read the depth of the image, and does a whole lot of different things that's way beyond me. But anyway, it's using artificial intelligence to determine what looks may look good in this image. And uh, in Luminar 4, we had things called looks we could use. We have templates here in Luminar AI, which are basically looks. But Luminar suggests the uh, different looks that we can use. In other words, for this photo, it's saying, Hey, you can use easy landscapes. You might want to try the filmatic looks. You may want to try the artistic looks. And you could go ahead and click on one of these uh, collections of looks. Let's try easy landscapes. So we click on this and we're greeted with uh, long exposure, sunset, clean light, noirscape, 
for streaming and snowfall. So we could start clicking away and seeing if there's one here that works for us. So we could click on long exposure and say, man, that's beautiful. And at this point, we can totally just be done. This is totally up to us. We don't have to take a template just the way it is. It could just be a starting point and you work on it from there. Then you can go to edit and continue your, continue your editing or try another one. Like let's try sunset. Now this is not a sunset, so that wouldn't work. Let's try clean light. Eh, it's okay. I'm not really happy with that one. If you were thinking black and white, you might want to try this one, the wirescape. Okay, there's a black and white. It might work on this. And for stream, there is no for stream, but click it anyway. Try it. Nah, it's not bad, actually. I kind of like that one. And snowfall, obviously, it's a summer day, so that's nah, not going to really work well. So the one I might choose would be long exposure. And don't forget, you have tons of templates. Now, you can work with the ones they suggest. Just come back to templates, click here, and try some of the other suggestions, or go down through your list. Who says you have to use what they suggest? You can use any old template you want. Even if it's something like urban style and this is a farm scene, try them. You can try anything you want. You can even go here and get more templates, purchase more templates. So there you go. I mean, so that's one way of working. Start with a template as a starting point and then edit from there. But I'm going to show you my favorite way to do it. And that's do your own edit. Now, this is just the way I like to do it. You do it the way you want. I'll show you all the different ways, but... I'm going to show you my way. So what we want to do now is go back to the original raw image. So to do that, go down here, see where it says long exposure. That was the um, template that I clicked on, long exposure. And by the way, there is a opacity slider here. So if you like that adjustment, but you thought it was a little too strong, you can pull this opacity slider back. Okay, and ease that adjustment off. Really cool. I just thought I'd point that out. But what you want to do, see the three dots right here. Click that and you can go to reset all adjustments. And when you do, it resets everything back to the original unedited image. Now, remember, we're working on a raw file here. So let's come up here and click edit. And when we do, we get the essentials tab comes up here and there's no adjustments on here. If there's ever an adjustment that you make, you're going to get a little dot outside of the tool that you make the adjustment on. Or if you made an adjustment inside of a tab here, because inside each one of these tabs, like Essential, are a bunch of different tools. So if I click on Creative, there's a bunch of different tools. All these tabs have different tools, okay? So whenever you've used any tool, a little dot will appear outside of the group here, letting you know that you've used the tool inside of that group or many or several tools inside that group, okay? But right now we're on Essentials. Now this image, the exposure isn't bad. Now we can get our histogram by coming up here to View and clicking on show histogram as you can see it's a decent histogram okay and i would probably start out with this image because the exposure is half decent right away i would go right to enhance ai and give it some accent ai just start to bump that up and like look at that magic right there you know enhance ai or accent ai inside of it is amazing so i'm going to give it a decent amount of accent ai and now let's give it some sky enhancer ai but see how quick you can edit with luminar ai it's really nice and that, that looks really good. And then I'd go on from there. What would I do next? I may want to try, um, well, what I probably should do is go to denoise and give it a little bit of noise reduction. Because remember, there's no noise reduction on it at all. So I'm going to give it some noise reduction. I don't really see any color noise, so I'm not going to mess with that. And um, the other thing I want to do is let's go, go to our pro tab and go to optics because inside of optics is auto distortion correction. So I'm going to click that on. I'm going to click on remove chromatic aberrations. Very important. Uh, let's go back to the essentials tab under composition. You're going to find, um, uh, you're going to find uh, your crop tool, your composition AI tools in here. And you also have your perspective tool. So I can click this uh, to level this out, make sure it's level. And if there's any um, distortion in here, geometric distortion, I believe this would take care of it. So you could click that and see if that corrects anything. Takes a second or two for it to render. Yeah, and that all looks good. And I could run the composition tool if I want to, but I'm happy with it. I'm just going to leave it the way it is for now. I'm going to do a quick edit here. I don't want this tutorial to get too long, but just show you some basics in editing here. So... I used uh, Enhance AI and see the little dot there. Now I may go to Structure AI next and give it a little bit of Structure AI just to make it pop a little bit. Now I don't want to go too crazy. You can go too crazy and make it look horrible. But I'm just going to give it a little bit of Structure AI. Not much, but a little bit right there. And you can always toggle these adjustments with these little toggles here on and off. So you can see like the before 
and the after. So that's a good little tip. And you have masking here in here as well. You can mask anything you want. For instance, you may want structure AI only affecting the foreground and not the sky or vice versa. So you have total masking capabilities in Luminar AI. And I should add a little bit of uh, sharpness. Now your sharpness is going to be found in details here. You'll see sharpen right here. And I like to usually zoom into 100% when I do this, and we'll just give it a little bit of sharpening. If you shoot in JPEG, your images will get sharpening from your camera, but whenever you're shooting in RAW, there's no sharpening added, and RAW images always look soft. So you always got to add a little bit of sharpening to your RAW images. That's very important. Once I've added a few adjustments to my image, I like to come up to this little eye here and give it a click and hold it down. We can see my before and after. So as you can see, it looks really good, and I'm actually happy with this with this image so far it doesn't really need a whole lot but we can go crazy here and do a bunch of things for instance we could come here to landscape and maybe try some golden hour on it a lot of times that'll look really good in an image maybe just a little bit of golden hour is cool how about foliage enhancer do we want to try that yeah you don't want to go crazy here because everything looks nuclear here but here's a little tip. If you're starting to get nuclear looking grass or trees, you can always come to the advanced settings and adjust the hue here and say warm things up or whatever. So you can play around with that a little bit. But a little foliage enhancer goes a long way. So I might just add just a little bit of that to it. And I think that looks really good. And we could add a vignette around it uh, just to darken the edges. And we could come and go to creative and... We can replace the sky, but I love the sky in this image. I wouldn't do it. Uh, we can uh, try a LUT on it to go into mood and try a different LUT. You know, we can hover over these LUTs and see what they do. I'm not going to do that now, but this is all here for you to play with and uh, try some different filters out here. You can try mystical, see what that does to it. I always like the mystical filter. Let's just see what a little mystical does to this. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of mystical filter on there. Makes that sky look really cool. But I think I'm going to leave that off for now. To reset anything, see this little arrow here? Just give that a click and that will reset it back. But at this point, you know what? I'm really happy with this image. And I think I would probably call this a nice basic edit. At least a good starting point. Here's a good tip for you. Say this is the way you like to always start out your raw image edits. These are the basic adjustments that you use first. Well, you could save this out as your very own template and your own starting point because this is part of your workflow. So if you'll notice down in the bottom right hand side, see where it says template name edited. Right now there is no template here, but we can go ahead and save it and make it our own starting template. We'll give it a name, but click on these three dots here and click on save. When you do that, it'll save it and I'll show you where it saves it to here in a second and I'll show you how we can name it and give it its own name. What you want to do is come up here to templates, click on templates and see the little magic wand here. That's the uh, Luminar templates. But you see the star here where it says my collection click on this and if you go in here you'll have favorites you could favorite certain uh luminar templates you want and they'll show up in here right now i don't have anything saved but if we go to user templates we open this up you'll see template name edit so if i click on these three stars right here i can go rename and let's just rename this uh starting point name it whatever you want but i'm going to call it starting point so i know it even gives it the little icon of this uh, farm image right here okay so we'll call that starting point and so now that's something I can use I just have to when I bring my raw file in and I always like to start with these basic adjustments I could come up into my collection here and click on starting point and voila I have a lot of work already done for me so that's going to save you some time too you don't just have to use luminar templates you can make your own all right now let's say I'm done with this image I can send this back into Lightroom because I'm done. Now, it's not going to send it back as a RAW file with uh, Luminar edits on it. It's going to send it back as a TIFF file. So you won't be able to bring it back from uh, Lightroom as a RAW file and continue, continue your editing on it because it will be an edited TIFF file. That's important. However, if you start your edits from Luminar AI as a standalone app, Yes, you will be able to continue your editing from wherever you left off because it works with what they call a non-destructive workflow. In other words, it doesn't really add the edits to the image till you finally export it, okay? In other words, it's just adding a recipe. The same way basically Lightroom works. It's just adding a recipe to your RAW file. And then when you export or send it into Photoshop, 
it bakes those uh, edits into a TIFF or a JPEG, whatever you want. Okay, so that's kind of very important. And so you need to determine which way you want to work, you know, how you want your workflow to be. Do you want to use Luminar as a standalone app and have a weaker asset management system? Or do you want to work from Lightroom and use the power of that digital asset uh, management system and then bring your raw files into Luminar or do the basic edits in Lightroom and then send them off to Luminar from there or into Photoshop as a smart object? object. That's totally up to you. And I just want to give you all the different options. All right. And then when you're all said and done, all you need to do is click apply and that'll send your image back into Lightroom and it will be a TIFF file. And here we are back in Lightroom and let's go to the library module here. Here's my image right here. It is a TIFF, 9642.tiff. And I'll also command or control click the file next to it, the CR2 raw file. And now I'm going to click on my XY comparison button. And we can see my Luminar image on the left next to my Lightroom edited image on the right. I went ahead and turned my lights out because that gives you a better idea of what your editing looks like. It takes all the distractions away. So there you go. Today I showed you three different ways of getting your images from Lightroom into Luminar AI. And I like this workflow because the digital asset management in Lightroom is far superior to that in Luminar. However, you can definitely uh, use Luminar AI as a standalone app and get your images into it right from there. But I wanted to give you different choices and show you the Lightroom workflow today. And you pick the one that's best for you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.